Hi, this is Leadership Series Part 2 of my spirited conversation with Mr. Shailendra Goswami. In Part 1, he spoke about his leadership journey and the lessons he's learned from it. In this concluding part, he gives us tips to become a better leader, a better entrepreneur and some great advice which you don't find it elsewhere. So let's get started. Sir, our future leaders are in universities today. What kind of a skill, trait or a behavior that, or, or even a daily habit that you think they need to have in order to become better in whatever they do? One thing I'll tell you that the qualifications will not uh, make you a leader. Qualification may give you a visa, but ultimately sheer performance and competence uh, will decide whether you be a leader or not, however young you may be. Today, I'm seeing it, people half my age have attained the position which it took me 20 years to attend in spite of that good education, etc. So what I'm saying is that sheer performance and competence are the two things. Leaders do not become leaders in isolation. They operate in groups to become leader. I mean, I cannot say stand up alone and then keep talking and say, I am a leader when there is no audience. So a leader has to face an audience. So he must know the art of managing groups or what we say group dynamics. And in group dynamics, uh, there are many things. And there is a book on group dynamics. So uh, one has to understand at least the basic principles of group dynamism. And then certainly in a group, there are strong people, there are weak people. And the focus has to be always on the weakest link. Then the group becomes more effective. Then you become the uh, more effective leader. It happens exactly the other way around. You see any leadership organization where people always have flock of people who are good. But nobody looks at that group where the weakest link is lying. Because that link really spoils the entire group mechanism. So if I, as a leader, I identify the weakest link, I focus on that, I train, I take care of that weakest link, my group will function because the, the strong person is definitely going to survive. There's another thing in a group that everyone thinks that you're a superman as a leader and you have solution for everything. Every problem can be solved going to uh, the leader. So there are two types of people, the ones who pass the buck upwards. So I'm not talking of those <laughs> people, but there are people who have sincerely made an effort, but they are not able to reach the targets. They need guidance. And they feel that the leader is the superman and he knows how to go about doing that. And that role you have to perform. And if at all you have to perform that role, you naturally have to be up to date. As far as your domain expertise is concerned, you have to ahead of times so that you are not caught off guard. Because if your subordinate is asking you a question which you are totally not aware of, then your leadership gets exposed. So you have to be equipped with all the tools and tackles, which means knowledge, content, and whatever that it is, and expression naturally. There are a lot many people have too much of knowledge, but they don't have that expression. They cannot express that knowledge, or go across to spread that knowledge. And that is where the problem comes. So a true leader has to have these qualities. Another thing, the last one, is that every leader is going to have uh, two sides again, there will be critics and there will be admirers. Like I said that I have to focus more on weaknesses, I always focus more on critics than admirers. Because admirers are again different types of people. There are some people who admire you because they have to. There are some people who admire you because they analyze you and admire you. But the critics ones, they are always after your blood. And the moment you start satisfying your critics, you know, you are virtually leaving nobody to criticize you. And you also get your introspection done through critics only. And I would, as a leader, think that tomorrow's leaders who are coming into the marketplace or who are coming into this professional world must understand the reality of this world. That is, it's not going to be hunky dog. You may get a fat salary, you may get a fat perquisites and things like that. But the life uh, or the seat uh, is going to be hot. And it will have the same characteristics as we have been having it for last so many years as professionals. It does not change. The complex does not change. The composition does not change. 
So you need to be a group player. You need to be a domain expert. You need to be a performer. You need to be competent, and you need to be a superman. What about the daily habits or routines? How important do you think they are for the leader? I could talk about myself. How I have been in last forty three, forty four years post my education, because in education times you don't follow certain rules, regulations. You know, it's a need based, uh, as and when, ad hoc. All those words are there. because at that time the priorities are different uh, you want to be party you want to do so many things but when you enter a professional life it's a serious business and when you are getting into a serious business you have to last long like i say that time scale distribution if we say that if we draw up a complete uh, career plan or a career uh, life span at the age of 25 you may be uh, graduating or post graduating and then your family wants you to get married and settle so you have your family children by the age of 30 31 and then the children they grow they go into the school so by the time you are 50 they are 20 you get them married and you know this cycle goes on but then parallelly if you put a super impulse a professional career onto that after post graduation you get into a job so by the time you have your family extension or the family kids marriage and all you have been in a lower management going to a middle management and then thereafter you are climbing a path of a senior management and this process completes uh, maybe say 15 20 years time so you have to last for next 20 years without any problem then only you be in the race otherwise uh, you fall out of that particular race so the secret of my being here today is the first and foremost is that i have kept myself fit today i can stand and give a sort of a interaction or a session for 3 hours non stop on any particular topic that can happen only because i have maintained myself and that should i don't take any tablets and uh, i have kept myself fit for that particular uh, aspect of fitness i do not go to the concept of gyms what we have it i have my own exercise routines i used to play sports till the age of 55 i won several competition uh, up to that after that as the age progresses you have to slow down uh, the pace of the exercises so today my normal routine is exercise of walking uh, minimum 3 or maximum 5 kilometers without fail so when you get up first thing in the morning you read the four or five newspapers you do your whatsapp uh, you do your facebook uh, for half an hour one by the time uh, your partner gets uh, ready and then you go out for an exercise come back and uh, perform your normal morning rituals then i do gayatri mantras for 108 times every day it gives me peace of mind so whenever i am low whenever i am stuck i recite gayatri mantra in our culture fortunately have all these things available to us ready made so why not use them so after that gayatri mantra i take my breakfast there after i have my work schedule till uh, lunch time and after that i relax uh, for a while in this age i'm saying this but earlier after lunch i used to go back to work but today i stop at lunch time whatever that lunch time uh, it could be 2 o'clock it could be 1 o'clock etc and thereafter i relax spend time with the family and watch all kinds of uh, movies and serials and things like that so i do uh, gayatri mantra i do yoga i do my uh, exercises uh, Uh, regularly and i try to keep myself fit at any cost this is uh, the routine which i have been following for last so many years where i am here where i am overseas wherever i go without doing this i will not start my day or i will not complete my day and this military discipline is something which every one must have it otherwise i'll tell you today at the age of 36 or at the age of 45 people are having some serious health problems so this is the age when you are supposed to take from middle to top management post and at that time you are creating a handicap so you fall out of the line somebody else comes in do you realize all your 20 25 years of work you are sacrificing because of you following up uh, the routines or not being doing something for yourself which you should be so my first and foremost mantra to all the leaders is that you have to be fit 
just see all our political leaders you know if they were not fit enough they would not have become prime ministers or they would not have become vice presidents or presidents or ministers or things like that and their work timing or work schedules are very very heavy they work more than 14 to 16 hours a day and if you cannot develop that kind of a stamina or you uh, cannot develop that kind of a habit or discipline then you are no good a leader so the future leaders uh, have to understand this that the points which i said earlier that performance competence group dynamics and things like that over and above that they need to have a personal discipline of leading their lives because today you are alone tomorrow you are going to have family tomorrow you are going to have your children your wife your mother your father your parents your in-laws everyone is going to take away a pie of your time schedule and if you do not follow your time scale distribution properly you will land up in a mess however good in qualifications or academics you may be but management of these things is very very important and most of the times people have failed only because of this not because they were incompetent not because they did not have academic qualification but there were certain other things which were missing out of their bouquet which i am only trying to narrate that balancing this requires tremendous amount of uh, patience uh, perseverance and uh, you can say sacrifice uh, no management book will ever tell you about health correct correct but in every every session of mine i harp on this because i have seen people suffering and right. nobody is there to tell them when they are supposed to be told sure and if you manage yourself very well bodily medically emotionally like today people are finding uh, mental wellness correct because they cannot cope up with the pressures, pressures. even mm-hmm. in olympic yes people are saying that you need to provide a psychologist because however good you may be in a particular forum you cannot be good in every forum Mm. there are going to be pressures there are 300000 people watching you and when those 300000 people are watching you at that time the pressure really automatically builds up and to sustain that pressure you need to be very well trained mentally or emotionally whatever those concepts are there so everyone has a place in learning all these things and uh, we must respect all these talents which people possess and they are out in giving but the recently somewhere i read that elon musk works about 20 hours a day um jeff bezos used to work 12 hours a day 7 days a week and our own pm narendra modi works for about 18 hours a day i believe this sort of sets a wrong precedent on our future leaders uh, how important according to you is the balance between professional and personal uh, commitments for so- a leader career is one thing but family is also equally important and somebody a good leader has to learn this aspect of balancing family and career a lot many leaders have failed because they did not have family support on that and if your family is standing behind you i think you will succeed much better than otherwise you would have so this aspect nobody talks again that everyone wants targets everyone wants results and things like that but then there is something which you have created at home also which is an organization a family which is being run by your spouse and you need to give equal time or you need to give equal importance to that organization also at home your parents are there they are looking at you so you cannot be a good professional unless you provide a similar kind of attitude towards your own people this is a simple message which i would like to give maybe it will sound weird but then uh, please understand these are the values which we are brought in or rather which we have inculcated uh, during our childhood from our parents that we have to look after the elders we have to look after our own families and things like that. it makes a lot of many sense otherwise these values are disappearing slowly um uh, but then nevertheless uh, whatever uh, we can protect we should great great one last question um a mindful leader is considered to be much more effective uh, we either are living in the past or living or planning for the future we are rarely living in the present uh, what are your thoughts on mindfulness and how important it is 
that our leaders be more mindful yes uh, it's a very good uh, point and uh, not many people uh, would really comprehend this but then based on my experience i'll go by the basic definition of uh, mindfulness uh, the very word uh, itself uh, talks about your mind body and feelings and related to the moment in in the sense the presence i have written uh, one of my readings uh, i have started a series on linkedin wherein i have uh, started uh, uh, projecting the different readings i have done it as they are as an excerpt and the latest of that talks about this mindfulness that you need to focus on the present because you can't change the past what you can do is only learn from the past improve your present to carve out a better future so this is a single line which i have explained in my linkedin uh, recent uh, post uh, and it talks about all the aspects which you have asked is that i need to be present and i need to be in the present state without any judgment normally what happens that people would like to remain uh, in the present situation and they have lot many judgments to pass you don't have to be you have to look at the situation very very objectively and you have to keep yourself awake for every moment uh, that is around you and do not uh, really crystallize or rather freeze your mind with a particular judgment keep it open sit down quietly understand the present situation and then work it out now this kind of a situation i used to have in the initial stages where i used to always worry about the future rather than uh, consume the present uh, in a much better manner or enjoy the present uh, present moment uh, in a better manner because in the initial phases everyone is worried about their careers with their earnings their road map and things like that and this is where i think every individual in the initial stages cannot be mindful of what is happening in the present situation but yes with certain amount of training with certain amount of confidence the way i have narrated earlier that you should be confident about your own self the moment you get confident about your own self then you start enjoying your present rather than worrying about future if you keep doing good things uh, for the present moment who knows what will be in your uh, future uh, certainly if they, you do good things you will have a good future so mindfulness is absolute necessary and you got to be in your present moment and without passing any judgments for that moment or for that environment or this thing or being critical about it with an open mind if you can grasp that present moment i think you have a good future ahead Well, that's it, sir. Thank you so very much for your time and the words of wisdom that you've given to us. I'm sure uh, those who are watching the videos, both the part one and part two, are going to be benefiting tremendously because what you shared is something that only a mentor can actually share, and you've given it all uh, for us. Um, thank you, thank you, Aparna. It was nice uh, talking to you, and uh, good to speak about uh, or rather reminisce uh, your own career. for long <laughs> my pleasure sir that's it from both of us if you have any questions for mr goswami or i you may leave it in the comment section below or you may reach out to me in any of the social media platforms that i'm in uh thank you so very much for watching if you find this video resourceful you know what to do hit the like button and share it with any of your students or mentor mentees who can really benefit from what mr goswami has shared with us in both the episodes so i'll see you next week until then stay home stay safe